Hello and welcome to Dove Biology Apes Lessons to Go. In this video, we'll be exploring soil erosion and conservation. Soil erosion is the movement of soil components, especially surface litter and topsoil, by wind or water. Soil erosion is going to be increased as a result of activities like farming, logging, construction, overgrazing, and off-road vehicles. Basically anything that's going to disrupt that surface of soil and uh, remove any kind of cover plant that might maintain that soil in place. Now soil erosion is going to lower soil fertility because what's going to come off of soil as a result of erosion is that organic material and that nutrient-rich topsoil. Soil erosion can also overload nearby bodies of water with sediment, which is going to impact those bodies of water's ability to have photosynthesis happen. And as those bodies of water fill, it's also going to reduce its overall volume and flow. One of the greatest examples of uh, soil loss was our Great Dust Bowl. By replacing the native grass, uh, grassland plants with shallow-rooted crop plants and over-cultivation of the land, it disrupted uh, the topsoil, allowing it to blow away with the wind. Uh, tons of soil blew from the west coast to the east coast all the way to Washington, D.C. The steel plow was the only tool that could break the plains. It had been a country of cattlemen here since the Civil War. This new weapon in the farmer's hands cut the prairie grass aside. The plow and the reaper made wheat the king as the new century dawned. But what was going wrong was that the huge and growing demand for wheat as the United States entered the war in Europe in 1917 meant an excessive unleashing of this new technology in a soil vulnerable both to erosion by the incessant winds and to the frequent droughts of this dry interior. Quite simply, a fragile land was being flogged to death. By 1929, an area the size of England was under wheat. It was a technological revolution. But in 1930, nature struck back. As the years of drought set in and the winds swept the plains as they had always done, the failed crops were not able to fix the soil as the tough prairie grasses once did. A nation watched as the plains blew away. The new technologists were abandoned by their own land. In one black blizzard, five million tons of soil took to the air over Wichita, Kansas. Another swept from Montana to the Mississippi. stories have grown into the Dust Bowl legends of the death of livestock by the thousands, the closing of railroads and schools, the use of snow plows to clear the dust, of cars sandblasted free of paint, and the exodus of three million people in defeat. It's now known that had they followed a few simple rules about dressing the soil and plowing the land in relation to the direction of the winds, such destruction could have been avoided. Now, soil will erode faster than it forms on most U.S. cropland, but since 1985, that uh, loss has been cut by about 65%. Part of that was the result of the 1985 Food Securities Act, also known as the Farm Act. Farmers will receive a subsidy for taking highly erodible land out of production and replanting it with soil-saving plants for up to 15 years. There are many farming techniques that will allow for us to reduce uh, erosion and to maintain our soil quality. One technique would be conservation tillage. Here we use special tillers and planting machines that's going to reduce the disturbance of the soil during planting so that we're only going to disturb the soil where we're going to plant our seeds. On highly sloped land, uh, we want to still maybe grow crops, but prevent erosion. And so one option is to use terracing, 
uh, to actually grow food on the steep slopes without depleting your topsoil. So by digging in little steps, it's going to uh, reduce that flow of water over the land and ideally help us to maintain that soil even though we're growing on that um, highly erodible slope. Another way that we can uh, grow things on perhaps less harsh slopes is by using what's called contour farming. Contour farming involves plowing and planting crops in rows across the slope of the land rather than up and down. Um, a new technique, a new technology which allows us to do this uh, with greater accuracy is actually using uh, GPS technologies. Uh, by basically programming in the lay of the land um, into our tractors, we can basically guide them um, around the property to allow for the most effective uh, plowing so that we prevent um, the maximum amount of erosion. Another technique is using strip cropping. Here we plant alternating strips of row crops like corn, cotton, and things with crops that might cover the soil like grasses and legumes. This way, it's going to help slow the movement of water over the land and help maintain that topsoil. Another option would be alley cropping or agroforestry. Here, our crops are going to be planted in strips or alleys between trees and shrubs. The trees and shrubs are going to help to uh, slow the movement of water. And they also can minimize our need for application of water on our plants because they're going to provide shade for our growing crop plants. So we get uh, a plus plus out of this uh, agricultural technique. If we need to add water, we also want to make sure that we're not putting too much uh, water onto the soil so that the soil can have the appropriate moisture levels and that will also help to maintain nutrients for the soil. So you can use uh, actual digital monitors that will actually tell us how much water is present um, and so that we can apply that water effectively. And to make sure that we're not wasting water, we'll want to use drip irrigation um, to be able to make sure we're putting the water right where it's needed. Now besides erosion and moisture control, there are some other uh, things that we have to protect our soil from. One of those things is desertification. Desertification occurs when the productive potential of dry lands, like arid or semi-arid land, actually falls by 10% or more because of a combination of natural drought and human activities that will erode or compact that topsoil, so that a once productive area actually becomes more like a desert. To reduce or slow desertification, we want to try to make sure that that land doesn't become overly compacted so that the moisture can be maintained in that soil. So if we reduce overgrazing, uh, we maintain forest cover um, and uh, don't overplant the land, uh, we minimize how much we irrigate um, or mine a particular uh, area of land, that's going to help us to kind of slow the process of desertification. Another major issue associated with soil is soil salinization. Most irrigation water is a dilute or not concentrated solution of various salts. The irrigation water that isn't absorbed actually evaporates and it will leave behind a layer of salt. This is the process of salinization. The buildup of these salts in the soil actually could stunt crop growth, lower crop yields, and kill plants and eventually will ruin the land. Now there are several solutions to salinization. One such uh, solution will be to provide a more dilute uh, set of water into our plants when we irrigate so there's less salt being added to the soil. If, so if salt is building up in the soil, we'll need to take that land out of production for two to five years to allow for um, that soil to um, kind of have that salt uh, washed out of the soil through the natural process of rain and percolation. Another big issue with soil is water logging. Now water logging actually occurs when farmers apply too much water um, to our soil and it leaches salts deeper into the soil. The water accumulates underground and that water typically is very salty and so that too is going to lower the productivity of the land and eventually lead to plant death. So to prevent water logging, we just really need to monitor how much water we're putting onto our soil. Lastly but not leastly, another big issue with our soil that we have to make sure that we manage is soil fertility. 
Um, soil that has ample nutrients is going to support the growth of crops well into the future. There are several strategies for restoring fertility to soil. One way is by adding organic fertilizers. These would be fertilizers that come from plant and animal material, like uh, animal manure. Animal manure is rich in nitrates and phosphates, and by adding that to the soil, that's going to help add essential nutrients. Green manure is basically a cover crop that was planted, uh, perhaps over the winter, and then is tilled under, and that's going to add a lot of nitrogen uh, to the soil. And then if you have compost, uh, lots of compost of leaves and grass clippings, that's carbon and nitrogen uh, material that can then be placed onto your garden and that's going to enrich the soil. Um, using a farming technique called crop rotation can also restore uh, soil fertility. If you plant areas with nutrient depleting crops one year, like corn requires a lot of nitrogen. It's going to take a lot of nitrogen out of the soil. But if you then replace that the next year with some legumes which have that uh, symbiotic relationship with the rhizobium bacteria that's going to allow for nitrogen fixation and putting nitrogen back into the soil and by rotating crops and rotating the land we're able to make sure that we don't deplete that soil of nutrients now a final technique is using inorganic fertilizers these are fertilizers that have been mined from the ground and produced from various minerals now the bonus of this is that they're typically um, easily transported from place to place, they're easily stored, and they're easily applied. But there are a lot of cons also associated with our inorganic fertilizers. Inorganic fertilizers don't add humus, that organic material to the soil, which is going to reduce the soil's ability to hold water if we're only applying inorganics. They're only going to supply two to three of the 20 nutrients that plant needs. If you've ever been and picked up fertilizer from Lowe's or another home improvement store, you notice that they typically have like three big numbers on the front, like 10, 10, 10, or in this example, 5, 10, 5. Those are um, identifying uh, the, the major uh, nutrients that they're adding, and it's only a few of the ones that the plants need. Usually it's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It takes a lot of energy to produce, transport, and apply these fertilizers. They release nitrous oxide, which is a greenhouse gas, and that has the potential to contributing to global warming. And then finally, if we put too much, or if we put these fertilizers on at the wrong time, when it rains, those uh, plant nutrients will come off the land, go into our waterways, and lead to eutrophication and contamination of groundwater. Soil is a potentially renewable resource. Unsustainable use of this resource can lead to its depletion faster than it can be renewed. By using appropriate agricultural techniques, we can maintain soil quality and conserve this essential resource.